welcome once again everybody it is really wonderful that uh, we are meeting again and as uh, yumna was mentioning it's really it's really nice to have a once in a month program uh, in this total total uh, clutter of uh, zoom with so many webinars and meetings i'm glad that uh, mr dilip kumar has uh, um, persuaded all of us to have this once a month welcome Uh, to Dr. Sabu and uh, Advocate Krishnan Karta and all of you, uh, today uh, is going to be an animated discussion. We are all looking forward to it. Advocate Krishnan Karta, as you know, as most of you would know, had an unusual life, starting with music and into movies, and then a search for truth, and inspired by uh, Sri Sati Sai Baba, who was also my guru in Bangalore. Um, in the early days <clears throat> his social service is also well known in education the madhuvan sai vidyashram where he is talking uh, from today um, the center for excellence uh, actually he had caught my attention uh, when i listened to him on ramana maharshi and guru once and also maybe a symposium on sri buddha sri shankaracharya and gurudevan where perhaps mr sabu also uh, spoke um, um uh, this was shared in the group in this guru anagraham group by somebody and i happened to uh, be fascinated by the opinions he had uh, uh, put for put forth and also the way he spoke um uh, so really really happy that he is here with us we tried to get him earlier uh, but he said that he wouldn't like to give a lecture which later on i found on on the net also he has expressed that he likes interactive sessions and not lectures so we uh, we could say that uh, we have created designed redesigned our program as interactive session to include ms advocate karta also ms madam nancy also had uh, nancy elding also had expressed that she would be more comfortable the last speaker uh but i'm really happy that he is with us today dr sabu of course is part and parcel of the erudite scholars of guru anugraham guru and guru anugraham uh, um, all of us are eagerly waiting for this uh, for this discussion today uh, between these two stalwarts i wouldn't really like to take more of the time because uh, we measure measure everything in minutes and seconds so over to the lip for the formal introduction of advocate krishnan karta the speaker the, the the guest of this evening thank you thank you madam <clears throat> om guru brahma guru vishnu guru devo maheshwarah गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम ओ शांति 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 गुड इवनिंग टू एवरी वन सो टुडे एज मैडम मेन्शन वी आर ऑल लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू हियर डॉक्टर साबू एंड advocate krishna karta um dr sabu as uh, madam said uh, he is part of our group uh, there is no prepared but uh, for those who are joined uh, today uh, there are lot of uh, new faces so for the benefit of them uh, dr sabu um, uh, he uh, retired as a professor from uh, cet uh, trivandrum college of engineering trivandrum and he has been uh, a student of uh, sri narayana guru uh, and uh, his philosophy uh, for past uh, two decades uh, under uh, sri narayana narayana gurukulam avarkala so he has written uh, many books um, including uh, in scientific arena as well as um, in sri narayana guru studies uh, the recent book uh, really uh, become a discussion point in uh, the political as well as uh, intellectual uh, arena of uh, kerala uh, titled viplavathinte kilake nada 
So he is also regularly writing in the Guru Bilam uh, monthly. Uh, currently, he is uh, translating uh, the uh, psychology of Darshanamala written by. <clears throat> so welcome, uh, Dr. Sabu, uh, to this uh, evening. Uh, now our uh, guest uh, speaker, um, Advocate Krishna Karta. Uh, as Madam uh, mentioned, he's an amazing personality. Uh, so his life history is really interesting. Uh, he started as a journalist. He's basically a, a commerce and a business uh, management uh, gradu uh, uh, graduate, and um, uh, he has done uh, legal studies as well. So he started as a journalist uh, with a few um, uh, business magazines uh, in Mumbai. Uh, later, he has turned uh, uh, his uh, career into movie making. Uh, at the age of uh, 23, uh, he produced a Hindi movie uh, starring uh, Seema Biswas. Uh, that movie actually got international attention. Uh, so then he also, uh, I think, uh, entered into music and created some fusion music with sitar uh, for the Doodarshan that time. Um, so uh, the call uh, from the spiritual world uh, came and uh, Dr. Karta turned to uh, become a devotee of uh, Sri Sati Sai Baba. And uh, he had a, a good fortune of meeting uh, Bhagavan Sati Sai Baba for uh, several occasions, numerous occasions. And uh, with his blessing and advice, uh, Dr. Karta established uh, Mathuan uh, Sai Charitable Trust. Uh, it runs a school, very, very uh, special school uh, a privileged uh, 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 areas, um, as well as mixing with um, the regular students. So it's a very, very unique blend of um, education uh, departed there. Uh, so um, uh, as Madam said, uh, Dr. Karta has uh, given a lot of talks and uh, especially in uh, Advaita Vedanta and related topics. And I also had the fortune of hearing him. Uh, we were really impressed with the clarity of thoughts uh, he could be able to establish during these discussions. And um, um, Dr. Karta also uh, drawn parallel uh, guru with uh, Buddha, uh, Sri Shangara. Today, I think uh, he will be taking us to a different dimension of uh, drawing a parallel of a guru with the three great personalities, uh, Sri Shankara and uh, uh, Janaka. So that is really, uh, we are all looking forward to hear uh, that a new a third dimension uh, of a parallel with guru. Uh, a warm welcome, uh, Advocate Krishna Karta, to this uh, forum. Uh, I invite uh, Dr. Sabu to initiate uh, the uh, discussions. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Emna. Thank you, Gija Mom. Thank you, Dilip Sir. And welcome, Karta Sir. So we offered this series with Nancy Yielding last month. While Conversing with Nancy Yielding, I mentioned one of the works of her, but Narayana Guru is not. So we all see Narayana Guru, but she thought in a different dimension, but Narayana Guru is not. So there are people like that, rare people, who see what everybody else has seen and think what nobody else has thought. So today also, we have a personality who belongs to that category. We can see what everybody else has seen and think what nobody else has thought. Dilip sir has already mentioned about the topic that which we are going to converse. It's about Shivagiri pilgrimage. We all know about Shivagiri pilgrimage. But also we discuss about the different topics involved in Shivagiri pilgrimage, like the like education, cleanliness, devotion to God, organization, agriculture, trade or commerce, handiworks, then science and technology. We all know this. But he thought in a different way. He could see three different aspects in Sivagiri pilgrimage. The work of hands, 
the heart and the brain not simply the hands heart and head of ordinary human beings he connected it with three great personalities or the lives are mentioned the hands of janagan the heart of buddha and the head of sankaracharya so you could find these three aspects in shivagiri pilgrimage totally different from the usual perspective connecting guru with buddha and sankaracharya is not new then guru attained samadhi the organ of brahma vidya sangam theosophical society sanadana dharma the reported guru as a combination of uh, buddha jesus prophet mohammed sankaracharya and manu a combination of the compassion of buddha humility of jesus courage of prophet nabi intellect of sankaracharya and the administrative capacity of manu but janaka was not there so janaka is something unique linking guru with janaka is something unique a unique contribution of tatasa so he will explain about the concept the philosophical background of shivagiri pilgrimage the scope of this type of viewing at shivagiri pilgrimage etc so i will just give a brief introduction about shivagiri pilgrimage again which is not that much noticed one aspect is that a lot of studies are going on the domain of narada guru but one area that is not given due consideration is the application of guru's philosophy to solve social issues all other areas are now largely covered but this is an area which is left almost in the beginning of 1970s nadaraja guru outlines the guidelines for such a the tremendous potential of guru's philosophy to apply in economics politics education law ethics so whatever fields are there connected to the human life personal life as well as social life we can apply the philosophy of narayana guru and develop new concepts in all these fields so that area is almost almost neglected after 1970 so it is high time to bring that to the notice of the public and also to the policy making it may not be that much easy to bring it to the policy to the attention of policy decision makers and make a change but we can change ourselves our own personal concepts so in that applied fields the today's one of the today's buzzwords is development then we can link the developmental concept of narada guru with shivagiri pilgrimage we can see a perfect balance between the material and non material aspects of life so that's an extension of what nadaraja guru proposed based on the guidelines that is there so that is how that's why i proposed the topic he readily agreed he welcomed it because he too is, he too is very comfortable with that concept so that is the background why this topic was selected the application of guru's philosophy in different domains and regarding shivagiri pilgrimage also our usual notion is that this is something new it is actually not it was not new actually it was only a reminder guru talked about the same subject in 1905 itself to the organizers of sndp yogam we can see the details of the whole thing in the history of sndp yogam he was not just mentioning the topics so there he mentioned only four topics religion morality education and industry but under these four topics or all these topics covered under the eight topics of shivagiri pilgrimage were included that was there not only just proposing the topics guru even gave the detailed program how to implement it that also was given in 1905 but i think nobody noticed it nobody took it seriously so the proposal given by guru during the conversation with kitan writer seeking permission for shivagiri pilgrimage was only a reminder of what he said in 1905 another very surprising thing is that the philosophical concept behind this model is given in another message by guru when shivagiri madam was established in 1907 it was published advaita jeevitam so guru has his own concept of development the unity vision the unity life advaita jeevitam so here we can see that manifestation of that 
അദ്വൈത ജീവിതം ഇൻ ടേംസ് ഓഫ് ദി ഓർഡിനറി ടോപ്പിക്സ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് ശിവഗിരി പിൽഗ്രിമേജ് ഡിഫറെന്റ് ടോപ്പിക്സ് ഓഫ് ശിവഗിരി പിൽഗ്രിമേജ് അനദർ ആസ്പെക്ട് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് വി ആർ ഓൾവേസ് സ്പീക്കിംഗ് അബൌട്ട് ദി അഷ്ടലക്ഷ്യ ഓഫ് ശിവഗിരി പിൽഗ്രിമേജ് എയ്റ്റ് എയിംസ് ആക്ച്വലി ഇഫ് യു ഗോ ത്രൂ കെയർഫുള്ളി ദി കോൺവെർസേഷൻ ബിറ്റ്വീൻ റിട്ടൺ റൈറ്റർ ആൻഡ് വരാട ഗുരു there are not eight times only one aim these are all means different means are there this guru included under eight topics this can be considered as different domains of modern economics like the primary sector or agricultural sector secondary tertiary sector like that these are not the aims these are only the means i will read out the actual wordings of tarada guru this is a document that explains the Shivagiri Tirthadra Tenda Udayam, the origin of Shivagiri Pilgrimage. What Guru said at the end of the conversation is that, Janangal kum rajitinam abhivirthi undagu. That is the aim. Shivagiri Tirthadra Tenda Pradana Udayasam ida irikana. So the main purpose, the main aim of Shivagiri Pilgrimage is the development of the nation. That is a single aim. All others are means. So that concept of Ashta Lechim, I think it is not correct. They are all Ashta Margas, a different Margas. Main aim is this one. And another point is that there is a very interesting contradiction between the question that was put by a written writer. Those days, clerks were known as writers. That's why he is known as a written writer. He was a writer. A very coveted job that time, a written writer. So he asked a permission to... for giving consent to make shivagiri as a pilgrim center mainly for iravas that is a question but the permission given by guru is entirely different what he said is that janangalkum rajyathinum abhivrutti undaganam the progress of the entire community entire people and the development of the nation that was the concept of tarana guru So that's a perfect model of development for a nation so these are the some of the not so known aspects of shivagiri pilgrimage now kartas are connected in, in a totally different dimension and i think there is one economist who identified the uh, economic perspective of shivagiri pilgrimage it is kandas he was the vice chancellor of delhi university and also the economic advisor of prime minister jawarla nehru He wrote at one place that Narayana Guru had the vision of a modern welfare economist. So there is a welfare economist concept in that, development concept in that. Added to that is the philosophical vision. So that is the basic idea of Shivagiri pilgrimage. And now Kartasar will explain how we can link it to the three great personalities. Janagan, Buddha and Sangara. And Janagan is a unique contribution as it is. as i said it's a unique contribution of kartasar a very prominent figure of indian philosophical tradition to my limited knowledge i have seen a very interesting fact that that he comes in both mahabharata tradition and ramayana tradition in bhagavad gita janagan is presented as a role model in yoga va system this comes under ramayana tradition there also janagan is presented this is a very prominent figure maybe the philosopher king of plato like that so with this brief introduction so i request tata sir to give the philosophical background of that balanced way of development the scope of seeing it through the perspective of janaga buddha and sangara how we can apply it apply it in social life at least in personal life with a balanced life so all these i expect from you sir pranam sati lotus feet of guru Let me first thank the organizers of this online discussion, especially Dr. Srimadhi Teja Singh, Ms. Yamina Hari Singh, Sri Dilip Kumar, who introduced me, for inviting me to speak among the learned scholars. I call of you join now. I have seen Dr. B.K. Shashi as one of my favorite speakers in some of the early sessions of this program. I don't know whether he has joined us tonight, 
and I must thank Dr. B.K. Sahu also for sharing the program today after giving a detailed introduction of uh, Sivagiri pilgrimage and also the philosophical aspects of the program. As uh, Dr. Jinja Madam told at the outset, in fact, I was asked to join this program last year, but it was postponed to this evening. The reason behind this was my reading and knowledge in Sri Lanka literature is comparatively very shallow when compared to the regular members of this forum. So it was like bargaining to sell a pin to a blacksmith, as the Malayalam proverb goes, Secondly, I rarely make speeches and, and wherever I go, I manage to make it a question and answer session so that the answers from me will not be tainted by my ego and memory. When I prepare something, my intellect will work and ego will naturally interfere. So it was only when Dr. P.K. Sabu intervened and change the format of the session into an interactive one or a dialogue, I could feel at home with it. Above all, I sincerely believe that whatever decided by Guru takes place at the proper time. And with that conviction, I gather courage to speak in this forum. So just now, Dr. B.K. Sabu told about Dr. K. N. Jar's reference, references, economic, social scientist, referring Guru as such. It was really interesting that there are different aspects of social reformation than what we have studied in schools and colleges as part of our curriculum. Regarding uh, seeing Sri Nanda Guru as a social reformer, I have some views which I would like to explain. As Dr. Sabu told, it may be a deviation from the classical view. Anyway, let us try. In traditional devotional literature, there's a trinity. Bhagavada, Bhatta, and Bhagavad. The book, the devotee, and the God. It is converted in Vedanta to Guru, Shishya, and Shastra. So it is contemplated that one attains salvation or realization, and he envelops all the three and merges them as one into himself. That is Sayuja of Guru and Shishya and Shastra. So the preliminary step towards this is union seeker using the literature to reach the sort. I had recently said in a discussion that this trinity can be rearranged as myself, the world around me, and my reality. Myself, world around me and my reality, or ourselves, the world around us and our ultimate reality. That's a new trinity. Here, one has to use this world around him to reach the truth of his reality. Unlike Vedanta, which does not consider the world around. This concept try to accommodate the world also to a greater degree, using the world around him to reach the truth. So this is possible only when the society is connected. Being left to oneself does not serve this purpose at all. One may read a lot study spiritual books, listen to orators, engage in debates, etc. But unless he practices what he 
he has learned he is not progressing that is called nidhyasana practicing what he has learned shravana anna and nidhyasana are important according to indian concepts so for monitoring the practice of nidhyasana one should relate himself to the world around so this is how sri narayana guru's teachings become applicable equally to so called spiritual and material lives i personally do not believe in this division of life into material and spiritual but those who have those who feel so need this division that's why i am saying that i believe that guru's teaching are more on one's attitude towards the other togetherness and being societal before qualifying himself for for higher uh, spiritual pursuits i don't know whether guru had used the same trinity in his literature but he maintained the spirit in his teachings all together just like uh, dr sabu told he told the carolite to become societal first before imbibing lofty ideals this is a real social reformation he planned to bring about in the minds of people regarding janaga as a newcomer in our comparisons i don't compare because comparison is a crime but still we are bringing comparisons all the rulers in videha kingdom were called janagas we are familiar to one of them who is the foster father of sita devi in ramayana as that's now uh, dr sabu told his real his full name is sirat thaja sirat thaja was also praised to be a wise king but anyway the janaka in upanishads was well known for practical wisdom i don't know whether there is a proper connection between the janaka in upanishads and janaka in the ramayana he had attained enlightenment and still was practically a very good ruler now i remember the words of confucius and fish says never give a sword to a man who cannot dance never give a sword to a man who cannot dance only you can, one can if he can dance he is able to judge people rule people and look after them that is what he said but there is a philosophical connotation for what he has said my understanding is that the manifestation of cosmos which is known as sat or existence has two parts in it awareness and experience for your kind information here i have deviated from the classical belief the classical belief is classical texts are saying about satchidananda satchitandananda and without giving details of chit ananda or sat but here i am putting the existence as a as an aggregate form in which awareness and experience take part it tau also they are called in and yang but they are treated in a different approach not like what we have in india in the indian text here dance is feminine confucius saying you know dance is feminine representing the experience part of the cosmic manifestation which is otherwise referred to as ananda so ananda is feminine all experiences are related to 
feminine attitude of man or woman and the sword here is masculine which represents awareness otherwise called the chit this chit and ananda are essential constituents of such the existence the balance between both is called the yoga the union this is clearly pointed out in many of the uh, poetic expressions of sri narada guru on shiva shakti sankalpa i have come across such lines which i don't remember now dr sabu may be knowing them which he can render afterwards so according to confucius power can be given only to one who can dance or it further means the ruler should have aesthetics in his heart janaka was such a great king he ruled his kingdom efficiently and enjoyed all the luxuries and pleasures of life silly was an attached to everything as if he possessed nothing he engaged himself with spiritual discourses and was interested in both teaching the wisdom of life to those who wanted to learn from him and also learning from those he thought were worth learning from when we say this we should not think that he was a lazy ruler always engaged in debates and discussion as you may be knowing the last king of uh, ayodhya was agnivarna who was a lazy king he was also his uh, rule was also sabotaged by a uh, social revolution seems i think it's the first revolution and our janaka was a very good administrator like king solomon that's why hand of janaka becomes over there my guru used to say that one should have hands of janaka head of shankara and heart of kutha here head of shankara represents the awareness of life which you know and it is not merely the body bound intellect this was there in janaka 2 janaka 2 had the head of shankara because he was wise that's why janaka became famous because he had proper awareness like that of shankara i can elaborate this like uh, by quoting one thing shankara ji has said na bandhur na mitram na gurur nahi vashishya i am neither friend nor relative neither teacher nor the student this was evident in janaka's life also he used to give lectures to seekers at the same time he was not reluctant to receive lessons from greater people like gyachamalkya and ashtavaka so this is where buddha joins janaka next to uh, next comparison is buddha's heart as you know it denotes compassion as there's now he has said compassion and sympathy are to be distinguished here we all have sympathy when we see something we sympathize with it sympathy is just an emotion so motion of ego emotion motion of ego so it has a reason that sympathy has a reason but compassion has no reason it is without a reason even when a crime is known we can feel pity with a criminal it is called compassion you might have heard jinwal jain story the bishop when the thief was arrested and brought before him for stealing the silver spoons bishop asked this thief he was another another than jinwal jain himself so bishop asked jinwal jain 
brother i have kept your candlesticks also silver candlesticks you could have taken them also why didn't you take like that so this is compassion knowing the crime and yet you are loving him this is known as ahetuka krupa benevolence sans peace this is what sri nanda guru had to his disciples we can see many of them were having skeletons in their cupboard but guru's focus was on their inner nature which is pure inner nature means the nature of the atma which is pure untainted nature so buddha's heart is a must to strike a balance with the sangara's head or logic both these are essential for a man with janaka's hand this is the combination in one of the online discussions a participant asked me how janaka's hand can have something common with buddha sarvan sangara's hand i could understand the reason for this question the indian psyche has not yet understood the importance of janaka's hands just now dr sabu told us that this is krishna kartas coinage <laughs> it is not my coinage it is janaka's coinage in fact he wanted to live an exemplary life and he lived and because of that we are using his name and it is being uh, mentioned in many places in indian literature also it seems or is it that janaka sans represent the practical life the day to day mundane life in our culture the present life was always forgotten and people were made to dream about the next life they were tutored to forget the present and think of the future this form of thinking was propagated by mimamsakas those who follow purva mimamsa school of thought of jainini they were very powerful then it was their efforts that in fact popularized the karmic aspects like yajna and yaga for securing a space in heaven this was duly followed by kings and thus by the noble and the educated priesthood was the child of this school a school of thought and that changed the pattern of society priesthood was brought about by the school and there was change the emergence of a superior priestly class duly brought about social inequalities very soon i need not add that we are still in the hangover it hangover it. this was the backdrop where the hands of janaka was forgotten or camouflaged i think it was purposefully camouflaged by the priestly class and the pandits because if the people learn to live practically in the present coffers of the priests will not be filled so janaka's practical wisdom was somehow camouflaged covered up sangara's head and buddha's heart gained popularity by force later on after the decline of this uh, Uh, mimam sakas buddha was sponsored by as you know by royal patronage and later on sangras vedanta could also gain popularity like that i need not go into the details of the feud between them feud between the followers of sangra and buddha which is not ideal for this evening so this was the reason behind my friend's question how janaka's hand can have something common with buddha sarvan sagra said i believe that sri nanda guru but these three aspects for a wholesome life of a carlite or a human being as i can say when he permitted and blessed the shivagiri tirtha guru bless the aspirants 
with spiritual lessons while he educated the common man with lessons for daily life on righteous path this is a social reformation this is a real social reformation which he has brought about i have uh, read somewhere that the pilgrim pilgrim was idea of a few and just now uh, dr sahu told about kitan right and all sridhar guru utilized the enthusiasm of these pioneers in such a way that shivagiri devtharanam should not remain as just a pilgrimage as uh, dr sahu suggested the pioneers might have been toying with the idea of popularizing the abode of shivagiri but guru did not intend to popularize the abode at all he wanted to impart his teaching on different aspects of living to people gathering there from different walks of life this benevolent intention of gurudevan has social and spiritual outcomes so far we have been discussing about social outcomes in all our uh, forum let us see the social aspect first which may uh, many of you can naturally guess you may see the people from different sectors are supposed to assemble in shivagiri to kharda farmers artisans small entrepreneurs poets and literata intellectuals etc etc a farmer could should get knowledge about the other sectors like small and cottage industries handicrafts etc a poet should know how an artisan earns his daily bread likewise each one will get acquainted with the other occupations and livelihood this is very much important for building a society so we are building a socially stabilized society personally it gives an impetus to one enterprising attitude and socially it brings about mutual understanding and cooperation between different sectors of production function one sector will not grow at the cost of the other i think this might have been the reason why dr k n raj called sridhar guru an economist so when seeing from the perspective of an economist i can see that all the production functions are maintained intact without affecting the other it's a very difficult uh, job for an administrator as you know because once we focus on something the other will be getting impaired like that and above all the philosophy of guru philosophy of life which guru wanted us to learn along with the philosophy of living which we are already making ourselves you know we are making our own philosophy of living every day but guru wanted to teach us the philosophy of life also along with that so he arranged that they they are to be taught with us uh, through the sessions in the assembly of uh, shivagiri pilgrimage one may ask why such an assembly is needed to bring a, bring sense to the philosophy of life and he was he has already written a lot of books on them which can be easily popularized for the purpose it is here that i want to bring spiritual aspect of the program this is connected with one of my discoveries made during the spiritual journey since 1988 again it is a deviation the consciousness both are has a positive charge the positive charge for consciousness the positive charge needs a negative polarity to descend 
such a negative polarity is available only at a field with differentiation. Now, we should understand why differentiation is imperative. Differentiation is the core of the manifest universe. The consciousness is absolute and one without a second. Eka, Eva, Advidiya. The one absolute indivisible truth has split into diversity, which we call the universe. The Advaita Vedanta called this a Maya or illusion. Why it is an illusion? Because absolute one is indivisible. And we see the universe as multitude of varieties, different things. So this variance or the differentiation is the true picture of existence or the Sat or the universe. Aneka. The consciousness or Buddha is Eka and the universe or the Prabhanja is Aneka. Manifestation is Aneka. Now we can see that the other pole to receive the positive charge of consciousness is differentiation. This is the basis of the return journey to consciousness. Theosophists say that animals have only group souls. You might have heard that. They believe that there is only one soul for the poultry in a farm. A flock of sheep, according to them, has only one singular soul. So they don't describe the reason behind such a belief. I don't know whether they know it. This is because of the lack of variance in the animal kingdom. The animals and birds in these firm, in these farms, are almost similar with less variance. But this is not the case with pets. Pets we personally breed are different. Due to the association with human being, minds, they also develop variance and develop individuality. For example, if both myself and Dr. Sabu are rearing dogs of the same breed, German Shepherds, for example, they behave differently. They develop individuality, name, body language, manners, etc., everything in a different way. The same breed of dog Right by me and Dr. Sabu may behave differently because of the human connection. They have developed differentiation. So positivity needs negative polarity to dissent. That is available in differentiated fields. And Shivagiri Tirthadalam creates such a field. Full of variety among the crowd from different walks of life. That's why Guru insists on primarily on four topics, then it may, I think it was made into eight. So, eight type of variety, eight of type of occupations, they are joining together, gathering together for an assembly. It's an August assembly. So far as the positive, descent, descent of positivity is concerned. The positive charge from consciousness can easily descend to this field. That is why Guru introduced the discussion and debate on different topics concerning life. Thus the infrastructure is set differentiated. And the software is also differentiated. I mean the lectures and discussions by software. The people assembled here are different, differentiated and the topics of deliberation are also different. You may see that philosophy as an unseen thread which holds and connects the beads of differentiated deliberation. This, I believe, was the motive of Guru. I think uh, I had uh, mentioned to Dr. Sabu when he suggested this topic, it was Rishabhanada 
who is also called the Adinatha, the first Tirthankara of Jains. He has made similar arrangements in the societies. That was in another uh, Manandara, it seems. Prashapanatha is also uh, depicted in Bhagavata Purana also as Rishabhadeva. But he is a first uh, Jain Tirthankara. He has lived in a time period which is not similar to our present time in which we are living and experiencing. It is said that he was engaged in big penance for some time and stormed his penance on the day of Akshay Tritiya in the month of Vaishaka. On that day, Akshay Tritiya, Rishabhadava has stopped his penance by drinking sugar cream, sugar cane juice given by a woman. He was a king. So when king stops penance, it is a celebration. So, the, from that day onwards, charity has gained the bottles because that woman gave charity to charity of sugar cane juice to our king, Rishabhadatha. This is the importance of Akshay Tradiya for giving charity. Thus, the day was started to be considered as auspicious for getting something as offering, not as gift, as offering. What he has done that day, till then, in nature, everything was available in surplus format. Plenty of food, plenty of milk from cows, plenty of cows, plenty of paddy, plenty of crops, everything was in plenty. But most of them were subject to destruction during the time of penance of Rishabhadamata. He formed, after the penance, he formed different groups of people. He taught them different types of trades, cultivation for some people, handicraft for some, some others, manufacturing of weapons for some, and few other things for other people. Thus, different varieties of jobs were made. Even letters were set, started them. People were asked to make letters. He decided to bring them back to prosperity by making these different varieties of jobs. This is the, what Janaka's hands mean. And this is what Sri Guru also wanted to make flourish in Kerala or in our mankind. He just aimed at the completion of human life after each of these pilgrimages. Thus, human beings should lead a life not in the forest, but in the society. My Guru again says, heads in the forest and hands in the society. This is what he aimed at Shivagiri Tirthar. You can have lofty ideas and be practical in life. This is the message of Shivagiri Tirthar, it seems. There is a richness of forest for our heads to go. Aranyagas, you might have heard. It's connected with the forest. But do not take the hands to the forest. Leave the hands in the society. That is what meant by the hands of Janaka. Now I have pointed out this since you have asked, since there was an interrogation from one of my friends. I think it is understood now. There is no need for separate mention of Shankara and Buddha, but the character of Janaka is influencing people 
in a great way or greater way than what we see in the case of others and now i should say that emperor ashoka was not following this ideal he was a buddhist anyway he liked uh, buddha teachings dharma teaching dharma patronage and all those things but he could not manage his kingdom manage his empire rather. and there is already a criticism that india was fragment, fragmented into many small principalities or small small kingdom because ashoka was a failure and this is the reason for that and we we, we were taught how to leave ourselves to uh, safe and secure in our own kingdom that is our life we are the monarch in our life so siddhartha guru taught us how can we look after ourselves properly so that we can finish this journey and there are lot of uh, sangramas wars wars and battles in between and of naturally social life will have this when you go through all these tribulations trials and tribulations you can win at last and come as a enlightened being end as an enlightened being this is what i believe shri narada guru wanted to embark our people through shivagiri tirthana and we are now concentrating more on the flamboyance and the the creative aspects of the event than the philosophical content but i i believe that a time will come when people will understand more about that because once guru think about something it will not become a failure there will be a period when we will understand mankind will understand the importance of uh, the pilgrimage and pilgrimage with a difference that's what i have to, got to say tonight it seems i think uh, dr sabu is uh, uh, satisfied yes sir very much <laughs> advocate uh, karthas uh, uh, speech i should say as a response to uh, mr sabu's uh, initial question as you said dilip was so fascinating when you said that we can extend the time i was just looking at my watch and realized that yes time has passed so fast but when i i just have to mention one thing that when uh, it was mentioned that uh, um, uh, mr kata will talk about uh, the pilgrimage my in my mind also uh, the thought was what would be uh you know what would he be stressing on and what is there to speak uh, so much about the pilgrimage isn't it a restricted topic but i realized how restricted my mind was like the i i guess the organizers current organizers of uh, uh, the pilgrimage who stress on flamboyance and uh, <clears throat> getting the vips and things like that than on focusing on the philosophy of life which uh, the guru wanted uh, uh, wanted to wanted all of us to be exposed at the uh, at the uh, pilgrimage where um, as mr karta said um, you know uh, he he wanted to wanted us to learn how to live through the trials and tribulations of life 
and em emerge as enlightened beings. I have also gone for uh, um, the pilgrimage once as a as a participant, once as a speaker, and another time as a participant. But I had I also was totally blind to this idea. And uh, what <clears throat> he said about uh, the importance of he has written so many books, uh, so philosophy is all over. Uh, why should there be a pilgrimage at all? And I loved what he said is that um, meeting people from all the different production functions is very important because people, negative people and positive people, it is very, very important that all of them are brought to one place because he said that only when the negative polar polarity is around the positive, um, positive, um, positivity can descend. In fact, it is so wonderful that, you know, how you um, brought in Janaka and also that it is not as uh, Dr. Sabu had, uh, uh, I mean, what I had understand from Mr. Saab, Dr. Sabu saying that it is Guru is a combination of Janaka, hands, uh, mind of uh, uh, Shankaracharya and the heart of Buddha. What I understand now is that Janaka himself was a combination of uh, all this hands, heart, and mind, and uh, the comparison with Janaka, which we had yeah. never heard of so far, is so so relevant. Thank you very much for that, uh, uh, Mr. Karta. I am one of the Ajnanis, Jinyasus in the group. Uh, I would like to listen to the questions by the Jnanis people who are experts in the group over to the floor is open to everybody thank you karta sir good evening this is mohan kumar from vishakhapatnam sir you ended very positively with the tetarana explanations it is very nice but uh, i have uh, my own fear sir the flamboyance what you said the masses who is assembling there their mindset uh, you said uh, one day it will be the philosophical thing will be learned by them. But how far, sir, with this present generation of Kerala, the new generation of people who are assembling there? I have seen personally, last time when I was in Gurukulam, I have seen people coming uh, in drunken mo mood to that, uh, you know, Tirthadanam. So with this background, how much, how that transformation can take place, sir? Please. See, uh, when you go to a kindergarten, you may see children playing there without any discipline. Because you are seeing them in a school as, as a beginners for education in a school, you know. They will play and make a lot of problems when they get free time. But as time passes, you know, when they reach higher classes, they will start studying properly and they will be graduates, doctors, engineers and all those things. So don't look at kindergarten at all. What you have mentioned about your experience there, maybe the kindergarten level of people, they may have interest in drinking alcohol and uh, making pleasantries of life. It's quite usual. They have to come through all those phases. It is also part of the society, you know. So one day they will change. One day means that they may be in another birth. Not, <laughs> need not be in the same birth. Yeah, that's what exactly. they will. Yeah. They will take time. Yes. One day they will come. People are uh, more on experience part of life now. So they are going away from consciousness, awareness. And this is very common. You can see it everywhere. So it is not the case with the Sivgiri Thirthana alone. So you have to pardon them. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Again, you are too positive. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dr. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Karta and uh, Mr. Mohan Kumar. So, um, you have brought in different streams of thought, including, you know, the Vedanta on one side, animal consciousness on the other end, the flamboyance of a pilgrimage in the end. So, uh, one of the things that uh, the 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 basic tenets of Vedanta is uh, Jiva, Jagat, and Atma. And this has been since the Upanishadic times. And the man's purpose is to understand the connection properly and merge into the Brahman, Jiva, Atma, Aikya. So there is nothing new in that respect, nobody has brought that as a new idea from the Upanishadic times since then. So that is there. So I, I think I must have misunderstood your statement as something you thought of as new. So that's one point. The other point is the the consciousness or the, the, all the animals that are raised in wild as not having individual souls. It's your own statement. I don't know on what scientific ground or even from Vedantic perspective that you are making such an assertion that I am not sure about that. In fact, if you look at the the modern scientific studies on animal behavior, especially on the symbol, what we call simple animal or bird called crow. There is a professor who has spent his entire 40 lives studying this one type of bird. And in that, if you look at his studies and in, in fact, just three months back, nature and science had different articles on how the bed brains are, the neurons are connected, how dense it is, and why they are incredibly smart beings, and the unique aspects of individual birds. So without looking into modern approach, I don't know if you have looked into, you cannot make these kind of uh, statements. That's can be very misleading. So I would like to hear a little bit more explanation why you think what you thought, you know, the domesticated versus the wild. For that, uh, I must uh, tell now that uh, this type of uh, belief type of belief is from uh, Theosophical Society, not from me. I had mentioned that also. Theosophists believe that uh, the, there are group souls for animal kingdom. That's what I told. It's not my belief at all. And I have not shared it at all. And Okay, that, that the belief, reason for we that. know that that Why is discarded like that. on many levels. And that is also about the uh, soul part of it and not the intellect or uh, uh, mental aspects of animal kingdom at all. Hmm. Soul is the reason, the cause, and not the gross or astral forms of birds or animals. So what you have mentioned is correct. I personally have experiences about practical wisdom of some of the fauna and also the flora, not only fauna, some flora also. I'm a person who is uh, who has been very keen on observing flora and fauna in different uh, environments. So that is a different uh, question about the soul part of animal kingdom 
and not the mind or intellect. They have individuality. When ha they have a separate group, not the one particular bird or particular animal in the forest or in domesticated surroundings. It is about the a group of animals or birds or living together or being reared together. That, that's what I have got to say. And uh, regarding um, Bodha, Jagat and all those things, I don't think I have uh, claimed anything new. I would like to hear once again from what, what you had mentioned about that. I don't, I don't remember that because it was a very long question. What? Yeah, I was referring to in uh, in your first part. We don't. Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to get this into a one-on-one -on -one discussion. We can do that offline, if you will. Uh, but at the same time, I have to respect everybody else's time. So, um, but this is uh, something in the beginning of your talk. That's uh, maybe that's why I said I must have misunderstood. You know. So yeah, yeah, I think I think so. I it think so. it, it must have been a misunderstanding. So I. I give you that it's uh, uh, but you know um, my point is uh, you know sometimes the, the the teachings of the theosophical society that is all by and large it's mostly discarded i mean we have to yeah, yeah. discard yeah, so many teachings to come to the current level of understanding coupled with what science offers you cannot ignore science and you know bring in some ancient thoughts and say that because that is not the world we are living yes. in so uh, that is my point so I sorry you. i i don't want to take any more of your other people's time there are other precious questions <laughs> this is just uh, just my uh, two two cents of uh, uh, wisdom or thought thank you thank you thank you thank you uh, dr uh, kumar rajapan <clears throat> thank you mr karta Yes. Any more questions uh, from the audience? Uh, Dilip, sir. Dilip, sir. Yes, please, madam. Dr. Sugida, please. Yes. Karta, sir. Karta, sir. Yes. You remember me? I came to Madhuvan for yes, one yes, program yes, yes. with Guru, Guru yes. Muninarayana Prasad. Yes. One program for Nadraja Gurus. Yes, yes. I remember. So this is no, I am asking not a question. Uh, while listening all this, uh, one crazy thing came to mind. That is, I want to share with all others. Because we have discussed about uh, Buddha, Shangara, and Sri Narayana Guru, Denaga, and all these things. Hmm? And you told uh, Shangara's head is in Denaga. Uh, in Srinarayana Guru Janaga's hands, then uh, Buddha's head, uh, then uh, uh, Buddha's heart, Shangara's uh, brain, and all these things. And while listening to all these things, I uh, remember uh, John Locke's theory. John Locke said, We all are born with a clean slate of mind. Yes, that's a. Uh... Uh, and uh, can you connect all these uh, these things to law theory? Yes. Okay. See that that's a Western uh, psychologist theory that uh, clean slate, Ingo's letter, something like that. No, I don't exactly know the name. And that is uh, I don't agree with that because you know. Tabula rasa, sir. Tabula rasa. Tabula rasa. Yes, yes. But uh, when we come uh, to this world from the previous birth, I believe in previous birth and also future births and the difference from uh, what the classical belief is that I believe that everyone will have numerous births. The enlightened ones will select the births. They will come as and when needed in different forms. Whenever they want, they will come. Others are also choosing without 
having a direct control over the birth. See, I am writing my script for next birth now. Unknowingly, everyone is doing that. This is what I believe. So, if that belief is there, you cannot think that the mind is a clean slate. Mind is a continuation of the establishment, which you have already brought in many, many lives altogether. So when you come, you have brought a, a, an old settlement, so old establishment with you. That's why you are fighting it very difficult to fight with the mind, because it is already an establishment. That's what I believe, and I don't uh, agree to, I don't contribute my listening to this particular theory. Is there? Western philosophy, Western psychology is there. Thank you, sir. And I viewed one. Yes, sir. I the way you, please. you know, uh, meeting between Demana Magarshi and the Srinarayana Guru. Somebody yes. asked you one question. Yes, yes And yes. I like the way you answered the question. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, uh, madam. <clears throat> so, so, firstly, good evening to all of you. So, it was really an incredible session, and that is what uh, e that even the time says. And, sir, uh, Advocate Krishna Karta, sir, you took it very ele elegantly, the session, and uh, that made all of us from the time eight we started, that is very much proven that all of us are here even at this moment. So, and Definitely, it was a one of the key aspect of today's was that we were able to talk one particular aspect on the Janaka side because we have we all have heard about the Buddha and Shankara, but this was a different angle on and uh, yes, lot of insights and I'd like to thank your presence and your insight, sharing your insight. And that is what uh, our tagline of Guru Anagram says that to know and let know. And uh, this is our, for your information, this is our season three. And today is the second session. And I'd like to thank Dr. Sabu, uh, uh, Dilip sir, for uh, initiating this uh, session with uh, uh, our uh, uh, Sri Krishnan Karta sir. And uh, without further delay, because the time is, I know all of us have planned the time and respecting the time. I'd like to thank uh, Yamuna for being the host, welcoming everyone, and Anup for uh, the man behind the screen to initiate this. And be beyond all that, Jija Madam for uh, initiating this Guru Anugram session, where we all are here to hear from eminent people, from each one of you to uh, share your knowledge and insight so that we all get into the same uh, same page or same uh, uh, knowledge and with this I would like to uh, end today's session and looking forward for a, our next session that is uh, season 3.03 uh, the, soon the announcement will be done and with that I would like to stop for the evening so thank you very much thank you everybody thank, thank you, you, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, with that note uh, we are adjoining the beat. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, sir.